In the African country of Zimbabwe, the military uh, staged a coup, which uh, now looks like it'll be the end for uh, President, or should I say dictator, Robert Mugabe, who is now 93 years old, has uh, been in power for uh, 37 years. And uh, I certainly think it's about time because his regime, it's, it's led to economic ruin uh, in that country. I mean, uh, I know all the jokes about, you know, the Zimbabwe, uh, you know, billion dollar note. He's displaced, violently displaced white farmers and uh, also persecuted his uh, political enemies. Tim, I completely disagree with you. Zimbabwe is highly prosperous. Pretty much everyone is a billionaire, if not a trillionaire. And this is down to the economic genius of formal, former until 2004, Sir Robert Mugabe. The man deserves some praise, Tim. Yes, it's certainly uh, been, a, been a great experiment. Um, uh, even though I'm glad he's uh, gone, um, it, it remains to be seen whether he will be uh, replaced with you know, someone better who is you know, able to you know, rebuild the country. In all seriousness, um, uh, he 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 is a bit of an. I don't like overusing this word, but the man is a bit is a bit of a. Is a he encapsulates the word irony quite well. He is quite and quite a committed Catholic, yet he's a hardline Marxist. Um, he's a man of contradictions. Now, the the case in Zimbabwe is interesting because. It's not necessarily the reason why he has been. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, excuse me. I'm not even going to say the names of these African uh, politicians. I'm not even going to try and get my tongue around it. But his wife, Grace Mugabe, uh, basically uh, forced uh, her senile husband, Robert, to, um, you know, to pose the vice president and, um, uh, you know, vacate that position. So. Uh, she she could uh, fill that position. Now, Grace Mugabe has a, a, a vast, uh, you know, s support network uh, of the G40 faction of uh, ZANU-PF, uh, the ruling party of Zimbabwe. Uh, so that was her uh, modus operandi there, was to depose uh, the vice president uh, and to open that position for her and as uh, Robert would uh, assume would die in the next couple of years, being 94, uh, she would fill that position, pardon me, and you would get almost a Kim dynasty in Africa. Now, the Mugabe opponents uh, thought that this was a step too far. They didn't mind kind of Robert being the figurehead of ZANU-PF, um, but they wouldn't have uh, Grace Mugabe uh, filling in uh, there, and, and I, that's interesting. Uh, now you have uh, Robert and Grace under house arrest at the moment of what looks like a coup, um, and they're filling in the details now. Now the vice president of, formerly vice president of Zimbabwe, has come back to the country. Uh, he's a 75 year old man, which is quite young in a country like that, um, considering that. Uh, Robert's 95, the 75-year-old's like a 23-year-old like a to a 43-year-old. It's, it's a refreshing change. Now, he's come into the country, but as uh, Boris Johnson rightly pointed out, uh, basically what will happen is there will be uh, changing one bloodthirsty dictator with another. Um, the vice president, uh, former vice president, uh, he took part in many of Robert Mugabe's uh, ethnic cleansing missions as well. One has to remember, this man has got blood on his hands. Uh, he's a member of the Marxist ZANU-PF establishment. I doubt anything will change, but uh, that's, that's an interesting uh, uh, thing that is unfolding there in Zimbabwe. Well, it's the, the whole... Uh tragedy of Zimbabwe, it's, it just goes to show that, you know, sim uh, 
because uh, Zimbabwe, for those who don't know, used to be uh, Rhodesia, which was uh, white minority rule. And eventually, after uh, a struggle, the uh, you know African majority took over. But it then became a revenge operation, almost like that movie, you know, Django Unchained, where you know Ro uh, Robert Mugabe and his government, you know, took uh, revenge on their oppressors. And you know, just look at the state of the country now. And what's even worse is that the same is happening in South Africa with basically, you know, a genocide against, you know, uh, white farmers. And you're seeing the same thing play out there. And, and it's, it, it, it really, you know, it, it is a tragedy that, uh, you know, these, you know, two nations in Africa aren't, you know, able to, you know, overcome, you know, previous uh, injustices you know, coming out on top. I don't really think it's as simple as that uh, because a lot of the fighting that happened in Zimbabwe, for instance, and even South Africa, there was uh, these black liberation fronts were proxies in the Cold War. Uh, you look back, uh, there was an Angola uh, war there uh, that Zimbabwe fought in against Angola. Uh, quite and quite another black liberation effort to uh, rid the country of Portuguese. But in reality, it was uh, communist proxies of the Soviet Union. And uh, and then they put in their despots of Mugabe or whatever in charge. And it was just a kind of a geopolitical bonanza. Now, uh, you look at South Africa, it is a mess. The, the ANC, uh, more or less now, is pretty much, I would say, rigging elections as well. Uh, ZANU-PF have obviously been rigging elections for a long time now. But I think what the nasty underbelly of all of this now is, is you don't have the Soviet puppet uh, using Mugabe to be their bloodthirsty tyrant in Africa, uh, but now you have uh, the Chinese. Now, General Constantine of the uh, Zimbabwean army uh, went over to uh, China uh, to talk to the Defence Secretary there. He comes back and guess who is deposed of the presidency? Robert Mugabe. So not only um, are plenty of people thinking that this uh, coup has a lot to do with uh, uh, Grace Mugabe's uh, thirst for power, but a lot of people also think uh, China's behind this. Uh, now, also, if China uh, are to be behind this, uh, they are not wanting or going to uh, expect a democratic society in Africa, more importantly, in, in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, so I think that there is also is Chinese elements behind this because they want access to Zimbabwe's iron ore. They've got vast amounts of iron, but they also want uh, access to Zimbabwe's minerals, which will help uh, the Chinese economy in its uh, next step of building to be become a more advanced economy that, uh, you know, uh, microchips, phones, uh, you know, technology, all these minerals will be coming out of Zimbabwe, and they want to put in a stable government and a stable bureaucracy. Uh, in Zimbabwe, and I, I don't think we're going to see a great deal of change. Uh, it's really unfortunate, but what they want, I believe, the Chinese, is to have a stable um, country that, that there is a reliable investment. And what happened when Robert Mugabe uh, disposed the white farmers of their land, not only did the economy uh, go and ruin and the, the country starve, but it also scared international uh, investors because he essentially tore up uh, contract law, uh, you know, there. So what, what, what grounding, what, uh, you know, what significance does signing a contract play, one would ask, you know, if, if a man could just come overnight and nationalise or give uh, the land to his cronies. So I think what the Chinese want is some reassurance uh, they want to put a man in charge that they know. So when they invest, when they uh, strip Zimbabwe of all its minerals, that they they know that 
their minds aren't going to be nationalised or to be taken away. And I think that is a, a geopolitical curveball there. But but also Britain uh, are fighting to uh, put in a, you know, a democratic or a better society there. But I think Britain are going to fail. And I think that China are just going to put in another despot in Zimbabwe. Uh, the country's going to lay in ruins and they're going to rape the nation of its natural resources. Well, this has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.